Welcome to this tutorial on adult and pediatric NG and OG tube insertion. In all patients with an advanced airway in place, and especially those patients with gastric insufflation, an NGOG should be considered as an adjunct airway management, since decompressing the stomach will allow the diaphragm to drop and improve tidal volumes. So that being said, an NGOG is indicated in any patient who is either unconscious in cardiac arrest or respiratory arrest with evidence of gastric distension. If the circumstances I just described are present, an NGOG tube may be inserted under advanced airway management standing orders only for adults, provided there is an advanced airway in place. An NGOG is also indicated for suspected drug or poison ingestion after consulting with medical command. The orogastric route of insertion has some distinct advantages over the nasogastric insertion route. For example, in a patient with a deviated septum, it might take multiple attempts to find the straightest shot at passing the tube. There is also a significant risk for trauma to the small bones in the nasopharynx. Epistaxis is always a possibility. An NG tube is contraindicated in patients with recent nasal surgery, patients under one year of age, and patients with severe mid-face trauma such as a Lefort fracture and in basilar skull fracture. In a patient without a gag reflex, unconscious in cardiac arrest or in respiratory arrest, all you'll need to have to complete this procedure is the properly sized NGOG tube and a 60 milliliter catheter tip syringe. If you're performing an OG tube insertion, you really don't need the lubrication. If you decide to insert an NG tube, just lubricate the distal tip. Now we have to prepare our tube and measure it to get the proper depth of insertion. What I like to do is prepare the tube so that when the tube enters the stomach, the gastric contents don't spill all over me, my patient, or the ambulance. To keep things neat, just take out that little plastic piece and replace it with the catheter tip syringe. Just make sure you don't lose the plastic piece, you'll need that to connect your suction tubing. Now that you have the syringe attached, you're ready to confirm tube placement once you're in. So here we go, from the corner of the mouth, around the ear, to the xiphoid process. Make sure you get a tight grip on the tube and maintain your position on the tube so you don't lose your landmark. What I like to do is just wrap it around my finger once to maintain the tube position. Although I'm not doing it here for technical reasons, you should always make sure that the curvature of the tube follows the natural curvature of the oropharynx or the nasopharynx. That is, the bottom of the tube follows the floor of the nasal pharynx or floor of the oropharynx. The other thing you could do is try to flex the head a little bit to accommodate insertion into the stomach. So you're just gonna advance the tube into place until you get to your landmark. Once you're at your landmark, stop advancing and try to evacuate stomach contents with the syringe. Once again, this procedure can be performed under the adult advanced airway management standing orders in patients who have an advanced airway in place and present with signs and symptoms of gastric distension. The OG tube is, went in very easily. It's inserted to the depth that I've marked on the side of the tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin aspiration with my syringe I already have attached. It appears that I have some stomach contents coming up through the tube and into the syringe. So I'm in place. I can carefully remove the syringe, replace the white connector, and hook to a maximum vacuum of 80. So here we're just slowly injecting air, listening over the epigastrum to determine if the tube's in the right place or not. If you don't hear anything, you're probably not in the right place. Or the NGOG could be coiled up in the back of the throat. That's a common pitfall. 
especially with the orogastric route of insertion. With the nasogastric route of insertion, a lot of times it can get hung up on the sinus. If that happens and your patient's unconscious, you can try a McGill forceps to try and advance a tube. If they're conscious, you really can't do that. So the best thing you can try for is to ask them to swallow or take sips of water through a straw while you're inserting the tube. Most times when you perform this skill, you'll have an advanced airway in place. So you could just simply secure it to that advanced airway. If not, you can tape it like we used to take ET tubes before we got those tube holders. There are special considerations for NGOG tube insertion in pediatrics. NG tubes are contraindicated in patients under one year of age. You should always determine the size and insertion depth of a tube by using the Brazo tape. And lastly, in neonates and infants, use a five to eight French feeding tube attached to a three-way stopcock instead of the full size 10 to 12 or maybe even 14 French NGOG tube. So you'll notice we have the feeding tube, the Brazo tape, and the regular NG tube. So this is some of the equipment that you might use if you're gonna put an NG or an OG tube in a pediatric patient. The other thing that we have here is we have a uh, syringe that's a little bit smaller than the 60cc syringe. It's about a 20 or 30cc syringe and a three-way stopcock. If you're performing this procedure on an adolescent child, you're probably going to use a 10 or 12 French NG tube. So you're just going to use the NG tube together with the catheter tip syringe, just like I showed you with the adult. The landmarks and the guidelines for insertion are all the same. For newborns and infants under one years of age, you're going to have to use the five to eight French feeding tube with a three-way stopcock attached. Attach your 20 or 30 cc syringe to the end of the 3A stopcock and make sure the valve is positioned so you can aspirate stomach contents. If you're unable to confirm placement by aspirating stomach contents, just turn the 3A stopcock off towards the patient, remove the syringe, Refill the syringe with air and reattach it. Reposition the valve on the three-way stopcock so it's open to the patient. And very slowly inject 10 to 20 milliliters of air while you're listening over the epigastrin to confirm placement. 